this is a very important here, you know, 5781, or as you call it, 2021. And um, things that have been happening all over the world has been very, very um, interesting, if I can say at most. And the funniest part is that it's at this time when the church is needed that the church has become kind of blinded more. And some of the behaviors we're seeing right now, it's earlier things that we have not... Uh, we were not supposed to portray, if I can use that word. And so I really want to share some things with you. And I hope you would be open enough to hear them. Please understand, whatever I say, I am not speaking to wound anybody necessarily or attack anybody. But God help us. Number one, um... The recent attacks in the country and the lit, um, recent insecurity in the nation. Uh, I, I didn't want to make a video concerning this. I tried as much as possible to stay off the spotlights, if I can use that word. But uh, this is where I'm going to go straight. Um, I just felt the time had come to really um, deal with such issues. So, People do not understand what this year stands for, and I want to take our time to explain it to you. This is the year 2021, and it means it's the Shemitah year. Now, over the course of the last seven, ten years, I've been giving certain prophecies concerning what was going to happen around the world and what was going to happen in Nigeria in particular. Um, and I began to talk about the Nigeria Israeli uh, you know, parallel, and um, especially the Igbo race, and what concerns the Igbo race with the Israelis. A lot of people have tried denying that fact, but you cannot cheat destiny. You cannot cheat, uh, I won't say fate, or you cannot cheat truth. But we got to a point in time where um, I was talking about the Shemitah, and why the Shemitah was very important in Nigeria, to Nigeria, to all the world, and even to Israel. And I, I began to swim last, uh, about seven years ago, I was speaking on this, and I began to say Nigeria was going to go into serious economic problems, and um, oil was going to lose its influence. The influence it had in the country, it was going to start dying. And uh, I still remember um, seven years ago, I began to talk to, um, leaders and I began to talk to people concerning what was going on in Nigeria, uh, what was going on in the world. And I knew that Nigeria, because I had a vision, and in the vision I saw like Nigeria and, Israel, um, um, and America's map, like there was a merging, like something like they were being tied together. Now that was very funny for me, but then um, when I began to speak on the Shemitah, somebody sent me a video. Oh, sorry, a photo. And um, in that photo, I, I wish I had it here um, to show you, but probably I'll just put it up on uh, my Facebook account later. Um, the photo had a crow landing on an eagle and then both of them flying together. And if you know, the crow stands for death and witchcraft. The eagle, of course, stands for the prophetic spirit and, um, you know, prophetic destiny in nations and people. Now the crow came on it, and if you check it, you find that the only two nations really use the eagles as their main symbol. And number one is the United States of America, and number two is what? Nigeria. And um, so when I saw that, I, I just took that as a serious confirmation of the vision I had seen. And um, I began to tell people about, I warned people uh, about what was coming. Um, that was in 2014. And I was sharing, you know, this is what is going to happen in this crisis. Uh, this is some of the things I was putting them on Facebook. So, you know, the dates could be marked. And uh, people could actually go back and check these things. I, I want you to, I'm going to stop right now and actually allow you to see some of the prophecies. And I'll come back and tell you some things.
Corinthians. Prepare your church for seasons of glory. Because these are the times when the supernatural will become so natural. So, if you actually have seen those prophecies, you begin to see that some of the things happening in the world and the nation now actually been prophesied for many years. And the question is, what is the key? What's the connection? Twenty-four. I spoke about the Shemitah. Every seven years, economies around the world are reset. But you see, majorly, the Shemitah season, where you know it has a strong importance, is that it is always preceded by a blood moon. And the blood moon is a warning, not just, you see, not just to the Jewish people, but to the church in general. So seven years ago, I still remember in 2014, um, I, I spoke to a lot of leaders and I'm like, okay, this is the key. This is what we need to do. Nigeria and America is in dire state. Obama was having um, pastors arrested for preaching against homosexuality and all those stuff. And I say, listen to me, and a lot of things, Christianity was under a big threat in the U.S. And I say, this is what we need to do now. We need to work again. But this is the key. The key is not just praying for America. No, the Bible says, um, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Look at that. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper and love thee. People have always forgotten that Jerusalem is the key. That Israel is the key. That the people of Israel is the key. You see, that's why if you check throughout history, nations that have risen in anti-Semitism have always come under a curse. I don't care who you are. If you go back in history, many look at you. Many European nations that were anti-Semitic. Now look at what's going. Look at what's happening to them. They're losing it big time. Even when America began to go seriously anti-Semitic, it began to come under a curse. There was a lot of things going on. I shared a lot of things that were going to happen last time. I shared a lot of things that were going to happen in Nigeria's economy and um, the nation at large and in the world. Uh, I want to take. I want you to take a look at this video. Now this was a long time ago. <laughs> 1993-94, there was a shaking and a turnaround in Nigeria's currency levels. By the year 2015, there was going to be a shaking in Nigeria's economy. Why? The Shemitah was not a bit. Something is up. So I was um, talking about it last year and I said, this year Nigeria's economy was going to experience a shake. And there was something called the wealth transfer. And I believe this is a time when God has raised up the church, has raised up the people of God. So we can key into this and hold the economic power. It was what God gave us. It was the assignment. We seized the economy. We seized the mountain of business. We seized the economy in this season and use it to affect the kingdom of God. If we don't do it, the people of, um, you know, the people of darkness will. The kingdom of darkness will seize this power. So we have to be wise. Nigeria is going to experience a shaking. Oil is going to start losing influence. And um, yeah, uh, the economy, like I, already the Naira is already losing value. So this was what I shared about seven years ago. Uh, this was the prophecy, sorry. I, this was the prophecy I got about seven years ago, uh, over seven years ago concerning the fate of the nation. But I, I, I began to talk about these things and I said, how do we get it? So last year, 2014, um, sorry, last seven years, 2014, I spoke to a lot of people and I said, we have to go to Israel and we have to not just intercede for Israel to receive the gospel. We have to bless Israel's and and then we will pray for our countries from Israel. Of course, the leaders I approached in Nigeria called me a false prophet, blocked me from their churches. You know, you know, some of the cool stuff. <laughs> you know, you know, called me a false prophet, blocked me from their churches. You know, and other stuff. And um, tell people I didn't know what I was doing. I just wanted to make a quick buck. And uh, I was like, I didn't ask you to give me any money. 
I asked you to go bless Israel. So I spoke to my American counterparts and they say, sure, why not? And um, they teamed up quickly. They responded and they went with us. And we got into Israel. We did intercession there. We blessed the people. We began to pray. And I still remember one of them called me in the middle of the night. And uh, he, he said, I just had to call you in the middle of the night. He said, because I got this vision. I got this word from the Lord. And I'm like, what is it? He says, the Lord said, because you, do, you did this to my brothers. I will bring revival to America. And you know the funniest part of it is that they were praying because it was all over the air that Hillary was going to win. And if Hillary had won, the church was going to be in a very bad state. It's going to be a surprise to everybody. And of course, it was a big surprise when Donald Trump was announced the winner. Nobody expected him to win. But people didn't understand that it was because of the things that had been done and um, previously, a few about a couple of years back, that actually gave way to this. Now, I am a kind of person who does not like to come out in public. I, I despise it. I'm not trying to get famous or anything. Trust me, this is what I don't, um, I try as much as possible to stay, if you can hear me talk, you know, uh, this is something I have to do, not something I want to do. <laughs> so, um, but uh, things that are going on now in the nation and the world at large have pushed me to want to make this video and talk to you today. So, what is the key to what's happening? I'll take you back seven years ago. Seven years ago, around May, for no reason, Hamas started firing into Israel. Rockets everywhere, shooting into Israel. That same period, a lot of anti ebotic attacks started. You notice seven years ago was when the first talk started again, or should I say the first public Instigation started about the Biafra, which of course died down a few years, uh, a few months later, only to be awakened after Buhari came into evil people, their own Fulani headsmen who have been doing killings, and I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Their own Fulani headsmen who have been doing killings, They're, they've not gotten these people and um, to go down to the east and do killings and then blame it on Biafra. I'm not saying Biafra, these um, IPOB guys are totally innocent. And I believe that um, even though their work is also chaotic in many ways, it is of the balance of the universe. You see, I see things from a different perspective, which means I know that for some things to happen, uh, for life to happen, sometimes death needs to occur. For light to happen, to, for light to break forth, sometimes darkness needs to be. And you know, and um, I understand the mysteries of this. Many of you probably who, uh, um, who listen to me as believers don't see these things as I do. Because that's why you're busy praying for things to get out when you're not praying for supernatural balance and order. And so chaos is increasing in the nation and the world at large. But the church that is meant to bring order has not actually worked to bring any order. I keep saying, when was the last time you really got outside and saw butterflies? What was the last thing you really got outside at night and saw the, you know, the fireflies or smelt the queen of the night? Chaos is happening around you. Things are disappearing. Like things that have been around for a very long time are disappearing and you don't even know these things are happening because you, you're not observant. You're not paying attention to this. The church today is more ruled by fear and politics than it is ruled by the spirit of the living God. People don't even, I, I'm serious, I, I see a lot of meetings happening and people are like, let's pray for Nigeria, let's pray for Nigeria. But then when you look at it, you just see a bunch of people who just want to get popular. You just see a bunch of people who want to get, who want to be superheroes. I was so mad when the prayer work started last year and revival was burning against the younger people. This was something that was seven years in the making, as you will see from the and prophecies I've showed you before. Seven years in the making. And this revival started and what happened? Pastors started getting involved. I love some of these major pastors. They, they came out and they didn't try to interfere with what was going on. You know, I, I love what many of these leaders and, you know, pastors did. You know, like Apostle Arame, um, um, you know, um, 
We are near the boy, you know, they came out, they didn't interfere, but they lended their support. They allowed the young people to do their stuff. But then when it came up, you guys don't understand that Joss has a prophetic destiny. Joss is more prophetic than you people really understand. Many years ago, I still remember the, the Lord had asked me to go visit a particular place in the city of Joss. And um, I, went into, I went to that place and in a vision... I, I was caught up in a vision and I saw something in, as a metal and the Lord was showing me this was precious metal that this precious metal could actually sponsor Islam worldwide for the next 50 years. And these are some of the things, reason why the job, Plateau State is blessed, but just has a prophetic destiny. It's, a, it's at the epicenter, if I can use that word, of a lot of supernatural happening, a lot of supernatural clashes. And, you know, the problem is that when you come here, you see a lot of religion. And, you know, I, I, I keep saying, even when people are getting prophetic in Nigeria, they're getting prophetic out of fear. You want to kill the devil, but you have him living in you. How are you going to do that? I get, you know, you see all the time when you see people saying we're praying for Nigeria, but these same people will not hesitate to blackmail you. These same people will not hesitate to slam you. These same people will not hesitate to owe, as in, to, to, to owe people, to steal from people. Or, 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 you know, I'm serious, a lot of backbiting in the church. We've accepted evil, we've covered ourselves with religion, thinking we can bribe God before that one die. You think we can bribe God with prayers? And this is why we've come to a place in the church where we've become idiots. I'm sorry. We're talking there, we're talking about past glory, but we are not seeing what God wants to do now. Please be careful that God does not have to sweep away this church, sweep it all and crush it to its roots in order to start what He wants to do in Nigeria.